Yo, yo, yo! What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah, we gotta do these side stories, because, yeah, um... We beat the whole game, and... The side stories, I just... You know, I didn't get to. But now we're getting to them. Finally. The first one we got... It's called Trust. Looks like between Monica and Sari. Which makes sense because I think they were the first two. They were the ones that maybe made the club. I think this, we're, we're going to get all the insight on what happened before MC came to the club. Well, us. But, you know. Alright, let's do this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I remember. Th oh my gosh. The street. The hallway that I think that's the club room right there. What the heck? We've never seen that part of the school before. We've never seen that before. And then here's the club room. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This makes me so happy. It's nice to see you again, Monica. Even after all the craziness you've done. Okay, everyone, the literature club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Dot, dot, dot. Ugh. I miss the big club. Oh, this is right after she, this is right after she quit the debate club. Who knew it would be so difficult to start a new club? I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only member of the literature club. In the days that have passed, all of her attempts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, Do you like literature? Maybe nobody's into literature enough to pick it over their club interests. I just can't rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision! But what kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. But before she realizes it, the re recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet, and the noise of the air is soothing. So she just she basically just passes out. Okay. Um. Hello? Who that? Sayori! Look at Sayori! Suddenly, a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Oh, oh my gosh! I'm so sorry! I never do this! <laughs> is this the napping club? No, this is... Monica pauses, suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is in fact the literature club. This is the literature club. Yay! I thought I got it wrong for a second. I'm super sorry. It was like so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize. I do that all the time. I barely can get up out of my bed. Oh. Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, see, about that, this is everybody. Really? It's just you? But, but we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a second. If it's just you, that means I get to be vice president! Wait, vice president? No way she made her vice president just by that. Um, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. Maybe I should be a president. Now you're just making fun of me. Don't do that shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori? Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening not to be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I, I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all, because I'm a little goofy, I'm a ditz ball. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about being the vice president. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that Monica tries to say something reassuring, 
but it's difficult when she still doesn't even know much about Sarah. She don't know shit. I'm sorry that this isn't like a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few, few more members at least? Well, no. Damn, that's messed up. I want to join now. Okay, never mind. Really? Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing, and you should be proud of it, you know. So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> yeah. Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica! That's such a cool name. Okay, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work, but you're still trying. Monica glances at the flyer on her desk and realizes her name is already written on it. So, what do we have first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit club members. I can do that. Cool. And I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. You know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. Yeah, we know you. We know how you do. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to really think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sarah suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug, then let's go. You don't even know you don't even know her like that. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sierra whispers loudly. Hug energy is what keeps me at my best! Hug energy? She laughs. Although Sierra is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. Well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. This is this is going good so far. Going good. And I said Doki Doki Literature Club. It's Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, the new the newer one. A day passes, and time comes for the Literature Club. Monica and Sayori to reconvene. Well, before we go in there, how y'all doing, by the way? Hope y'all good, having a good day, good week, all that good stuff. All right. As president, Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive to the club room, but she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining? N no, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. But I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sari comes in bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. S sorry, I'm late. I, I, I'm here. I made it. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sari spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. What's this? Are we doing poems now? Are we doing poems? Take my hand. Take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up, the more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. That's a nice poem. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Harry? Of course! Wait. Wait, no! That's the wrong side of the paper! Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet! I'm so embarrassed! Monica flipped over the paper. Written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now. Do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm not sure I'm anywhere as good as you as you are. Really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry though. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a week after I write it, and then I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. Like, why did I even do this? I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something along those lines. Aww. 
You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the Lift Your Club president. I guess you're not wrong there. I mean, she made it up, so she has to be the president, technically, you know. But I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. Hmm, you know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems you write and stuff like that. Oh, oh yeah! I would love that! It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people, usually. But what you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's helping me to form a more cohesive version, vision for the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Even though it was by accident. But I still was going to look anyway. I feel embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh jeez, I'm actually getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorm together? Because that's what we were supposed to do. My brain stormed so hard, it was like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. Like, I don't know what's wrong up there. <laughs> Sayori, that's kind of terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. Bruh. No, you're not talking about... She's not even here yet. She's talking about make cupcakes. I was hungry. But but it is a good idea. Isn't it? Um, Yeah, let me think about this for a second. I mean, when will we even have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, when they come in for the club. What if we had free cupcakes, cup, cupcakes, cupcakes on the flyers? I'm like, kind of worried that that would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know? Wrong kinds? People would just come in for the cupcakes and then leave. Nobody would do that. That would be so mean. But you know, I want to find people who are really into this thing. Even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list is hunt for people reading books okay 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 so what I'm seeing right now is that's she's quoting at Nasuki and Yuri hunt for people reading books that I, I see what she's trying to do you're not slick you're not slick I don't think I get it like going around the school and finding people who are reading books you know like in the morning or doing lunch and we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment? How do we know if they're just reading it for fun? We can ask them. I mean, it's that freaking simple. It's not hard. But then we'd be bothering people who were trying to do schoolwork. I didn't actually think about that part. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're not coming up with a. You're coming up with more. Ugh. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is just to hand out flyers rather than just put them up on the wall. I'd definitely like to start doing that. I, I know I'm useful. You ain't got to tell me. I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What will we tell people when handing them out? I don't want to be just like, join the literature club. Not that bullshit. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if you told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? But yeah, actually, that's yeah, that is supposed to be my job to come up with that yet, right? <laughs> a vision for the club. Okay, Siri, pretend you're a normal person for a second. That's fucked up. Wait, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> ah, real funny, bitch. You know, like a random passerby who's getting a flyer. You, that's what I meant. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Hmm, probably like. Literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. <laughs> that's hinting at MC because she thought that's where he would join. What the heck? Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. I told you, you're not... Sorry. You're not on the low. Okay, what if I said that we like... Do group reading and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's too boring. Thank you. Oh, it said thank you, Sayori. I think. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound like fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Catch them like a fly. Ugh. This sucks. Why is this so hard? Tell me. 
Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Siri? Tell me. Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you couldn't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like, intimate. How do we get that across to people? We could be like, express your true self? Be intimate with us! Hell no, what the freak are you talking about? No, that's, yeah, that's kind of... I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh! What, what, what is it? I forgot all my things in my classroom. How the hell do you forget all the things? I must have gotten too excited and rushed here. S silly me. Rush? But weren't you already late? Ne never mind. Do you want to get your stuff then? I forget if I don't do it now. Well, I'll wait for you then. I ain't got no damn choice anyway. Okay. It'll only take a second. Who does she think she's fooling? She's not fooling anybody. Sarah dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Hmm. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. That's stupid. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. That's lame as freak. Monica! Huh? You startled me. I was doing something. Sorry, sorry. But it's something important. On the way on my way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Uh well I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from her desk. Then the two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. I think I already know who, who they who they're talking about. This way! You don't have to run. Damn, you excited bitch. Slow down. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom, then lowers her voice to a whisper. See? It's in here. Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep just, you know, watching her from outside. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president, and I'll probably just scare her away. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath, then timidly en enters the classroom. She's like, ah, here goes nothing. That was fast. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. Why, what happened? Um, well, when I entered the classroom, she didn't even look up from her book, so I kind of just left the fly on her desk, and then walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute, but I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? The two head back to the classroom, Sari feeling rather accomplished, and Monica still feeling a bit embarrassed by the encounter, because I really do not want to do that shit. Upon returning, Monica and Sari resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics, from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list, and with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end up in a better spot from where they began. Well, I would say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah. I think we're really starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, w w what's this? Sayori peers at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. <laughs> oh, oh, don't mind that. Don't touch that shit. I didn't, I didn't say you could touch that. I was just thinking to myself, join the literature club, and she looked at it anyway. Right the way into your heart? That's so cute! Um, <laughs> I thought it was a little bit overdramatic, but Sari pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. Like, I told you about that shit before. What do you mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like I can tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but... Would you call yourself a perfectionist? Hmm. 
yeah, I, I really would, because I can't lie about that. I definitely am. I mean, I always had an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. I need it. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest at everything. So I don't really think it's bad. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it into exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we have only one shot to do it. That one shot, one kill. So, I'm just really afraid of deviating from that. The vision. What's the vision? I clicked it too freaking quick. It's... She pauses to think, then shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't even know. Like, I don't really know. I just want everyone to... Mm, she trails off. Smiling, Sari, Sari taps her finger against a sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of everyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best though, of course. But I'm here to help you. Monica returns Sari's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sari nods. Then the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is a steady paper of air conditioner. And the only movement is the afternoon sunlight, trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sari breaks the movement with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me, you're the president. I don't make, I don't make this shit up. I don't know. Oh yeah. In that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too! Sari beams and grabs her things. You can go on ahead. I just need a few minutes. Oh, I can wait. That's alright. I want some alone time. Get your ass out. Oh, in that case, Sari waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck! Monica smiles and waves in return as Sari spins her way out of the classroom. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a minute to zoom, zoom, zone out. I hear the music too. It changed. She was prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decides it was something she probably needed right about now. The club that I need the most? I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something that I could use to help people lead to ha people to happiness. Literature is the key to that. Yeah, you think that. Because it's the window to the real person inside of us. That's an opinion. And I need the person who's always forced to smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be perfect. Now she's starting to get it. She's starting to get it. Huh? Monica suddenly notices a flyer on the floor, a folder on the floor by her desk. Did Sierra leave this behind? I hope it doesn't have her homework in it. And of course, her freaking ass checks. What was the folder check? Poems? It's a photo of poems. Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as they grow just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me, all for joy. I need more. I need more joy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck. Every day. Pluck, pluck, pluck. So pretty in my hair. Pluck, pluck, pluck. You're going to die. Whoa, what the freak? And you too. Wait, where did this poem go? Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clean roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the prosperous field. Wait, where, oh, it's a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor. The carnage of my joy. And that is why I've decided I must become the flower. Okay, that took a turn. That took a turn that I did not expect. What the? Wait a minute. Sayori? I think she just discovered. Oh my gosh, oh, okay, so, okay, it's the second part. All right, so basically, I think she just figured out what Sayori is going through, maybe a little bit. 
another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up for a plan for today's club task, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sierra's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Sierra's going through these kinds of feelings, and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president does that shit? This whole time, I didn't even think to ask about her own feelings. So much for that stupid vision. Sari entered the club room with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? She can't say shit. I, I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What, what are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. I mean, y'all just, I mean, I guess y'all friends, friends now. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? You did say that. But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sierra responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Though the silence, Sari mutters her realization. I, I left my folder here. That's right. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. Who told you to look at my shit, bitch? I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying me. I'm worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sari nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. Silence. This is different, though. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So... If you do this, then you're just being selfish. Huh? Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sierra isn't ready, ready to share certain things. But as unfair as it is for Monica to pray, it's also painful, painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. Like, I really shouldn't have done that. I'm a nosy bitch. I disrespected your privacy. No, I, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Monica takes a deep breath. It said something, but it went too quick. Okay, I understand that you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put this aside so we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. Yeah, I gotta think about this. This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, that's our vision. Right the way into your heart or whatever. So, I just want you to promise that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sari smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sari's smile. I promise. I put my cards on the table. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So... Wanna teach me about poetry? Huh? But what about recruitment? It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know. <laughs> There's no way I can say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I just need some, like, motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't that hard. You just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good, because I'm no good. It's not supposed to, though. 
You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. You can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first, then make it sound pretty later. It's not like we're building a railroad where you can go from one end to another. It's more like a collage where you can find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it, but it's not the only way. But it's a really good way to not get stuck at the beginning. I understand. But I always get so caught up how it sounds that I forget what's important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica screams out your idiot after she writes it down. No, 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 keep that. Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not. Maybe I am a little bit. But the point is, you're not supposed to police your feelings. Be as dramatic as you want. But I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, she rewrites you idiot. But she stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote that down. I wrote down what I mad at myself for, and then I did the exact thing. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks. I, I think I do, too. Me, I, I mean. But you also, of course. <laughs> Monica continues to exercise, jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sierra's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly fairly lively with all her random thoughts. Phew! That was a lot! Monica looks up and down at her sheet. I, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it! But it's also kind of liberating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. Don't give me too much credit. I didn't say I was that all that. I have to try really, really hard at it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing with you. Sarah Beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay, let's do it! Monica and Sari proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find new members. I fucked with it. I like it. I like it. Next day, another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is a printout of the revised literature club flyer, complete with all the new ideas that Monica and Sari came up with. If this if only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. But the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer. Write your write the way into your heart. Sudden surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Monica and Sari had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from the students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be present if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? Like, why am I sucking that much right now? <laughs> the Little Club is truly beginning to take form. But with that thought, the weight on Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. The bait club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's, it's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real this time. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. Okay. But her hand doesn't even move. Doesn't do shit. 
Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects the tip of her pen. That just took me. Oh my gosh. That just took me to something I remember in the get in Doki Doki Literature Club. So, remember how she was giving them writing tips? And I remember one of them was like, move your hand so you don't, or else if you don't, you get a blot of ink around your pen. I like that. So she she did them tips because this is what she was going through. That's how she came up with that's that smart as shit. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh! Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica! Just move your hand, damn it! Monica writes. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. That's all you get is a stain. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. So, yeah, we already know Monica is not as freaking confident as she presents herself to be. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi. Monica hears a Sari approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then, she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, one of them days, you know, you just can't do anything. Me too. Huh? You too, Sari? You too? The new flyer looks so good, though. You've been working so hard. On the club, but also something else, I think. I, I can't do it, though. Sorry. It's just so hard to be vulnerable. Mm. Sarah takes a sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down, then stares at it for a while. What is she what the hell does she write? Can I trust you? No. Of course. But can you really? You can trust me with anything. Mm. Okay. You find out later how much you can trust her. Sari gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sari's desk and reads it. What the hell did she write? Sometimes I want to die? Okay, why am I acting surprised like we don't know the game? We already know how she acts. Sayori. She has nothing to say. This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So, so if I can do it, then you can too, because you're like a million times better than me. That is not true at all. Sari takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. You know, this, this actually hits home right now because somebody very close to me, you know, is dealing with this same kind of thing. So this this is this is like weighing hard on me right now. I'm not gonna cry though. This is something about me that I've never told anyone before. I'm trying to stay strong. I got y'all right here, so y'all it's strong. Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, wait, you don't you don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday. I want to though. It just feels right. I mean Maybe it's the part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. Maybe. This is the literature club. I trust you. More than I'm scared. At these words, Monica stands up. Sari must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sari needed? Sari's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I, I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I, I can't control it. Like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you could just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kind of thoughts that I have in my head. 
It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But then you're pushing yourself to be sad because you're not happy. But, but that's not fair. It's terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. Yeah, because you cannot say the wrong thing to her. For any of people that feel like this. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that, because it used to be like that. Sari pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. Are you... Is she referring to, like, something her and MC did before? Like, I don't know. I don't know about, like, I know, I don't know about that situation. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone at all. Sari pauses again, her solemn expression making her almost look like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to even tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too. I am worried though. Part of me really hates myself for doing this, like I don't even want to be saying this right now. But another part of me, I just, just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about the club, it's what, it, ugh, what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me too. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence, and our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> This, this is this is sad as shit. It, it's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Oh my gosh. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. I do too. Especially after what I'm thinking of right now. A feeling of connection as Sarah's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're just so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't, excuse me, I don't even compare to that. Monica steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. Yeah, we know you love, I know you love that. If you like. Oh my gosh. I like this. It looks so, is there, that's actually moving. I'm not tripping, right? Yeah, that's moving. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sarah rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Though their, through their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all the days have passed. This is the one where she really hopes that nobody new walks in through that door, like this is not something you need to see. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sarah's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking, to say the things she's never dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I I'm so worthless. I'm worthless, and everyone will be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear rolls down her cheek. I'm just... An inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything. And I just feel like everyone just has to put up with me. And I hate it. I hate it. The more Sierra speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to the overwhelming sadness, clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now maybe you put up with me? I just want to die now. No, 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 no. As soon as Sari loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her on. I don't know how she would do that. She only wants to be what Sari needs right now. So she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort. But she knows, Sari said herself, that the thoughts Sari experiences are ones that don't even belong and Monica can't magically make him go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle him, like any good friend would do. You have so much value. 
to me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have happened. Even if we never get any other members, I would still be happy. This is That's what you brought here. You brought a vision. And you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sari doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. It really doesn't, because we already know. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Sari take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sari lifts her head and wipes her eyes. I, I guess I really needed that. Some days are harder than the others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two of Shane smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Sari nods. It's scary. Since it's already hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course it would always be your choice. But if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. I think she said thanks. It went too quick again. I hate this shit when it does that. I think it helps knowing that you would. Sarah suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow! That made me tired. Like, I'm, I'm ready to get out of here right now. And hungry. <laughs> Well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I want to do some work. I mean, I can say that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. What? The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Who could it be? Who could it be, y'all? And that's how they stop it. Oh my gosh. That's a good way to start this after DDLC. I mean, which I played a long time ago, but you know, stuff has happened. So, we're going to continue on to the, uh, soon enough. Actually, I'm probably just going to record that one right after this, but I don't know. But we're going to continue on. We're going to finish this game because... I consider this the end of the game after we do all that, but yeah, I don't need to explain all that, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.